Today's topic is a bit of an interesting one, as I'd like to dedicate the first few minutes to debunking what amounts to an old wives' tale, somewhat of an internet myth. And while I'm not 100% certain how deep this tall tale really goes, I started seeing it many, many years ago. And once the internet kicked into high gear, at least the gear that we've been in since the early to mid-2000s, the talk of poison claws only grew. I've even read stories of cats having venom in their claws. Well, let's put all of that stuff to bed right here and right now. The answer is no. Feline claws do not contain any form of natural poison. Cats are not born with venom nails or anything of the sort, so everyone can officially rest easy. And I'll just be real with everyone <laughs> right now. I wasn't sure what sort of voice tone to take just then, because uh, should I be serious or should I laugh my way through it? I don't know. At any rate, poisoned cat claws, yeah, that is not a thing. In all seriousness, that's not a thing, but now I can tell you this much. What is a thing is flesh wounds caused by cat claws. From scratches to deep wounds, that's no laughing matter. Cuts and deep wounds can be quite painful. The sting, bleeding, swelling. If you get the paw swipe at the wrong angle or a bad angle and on very sensitive skin, a very sensitive part of the body, the wound could be quite considerable. Generally speaking, feline claws are very sharp. In fact, they're sharper than the nails of dogs most of the time. And as mentioned, that swiping motion can only add to the trauma. The greater and deeper the cut, the more risk for potential infection. Children, the elderly, and those who are immunocompromised are at the highest risk for possible side effects beyond the wound itself. And when it comes to care, if the wound is rather minor in nature, just your run-of-the-mill scratch, if you will, then simply clean the area with soap and water, and if needed, just to be on the safe side, apply antiseptic ointment to the wound. With respect to more advanced care, if the wound is bleeding and you're just unable to stop it and swelling is seemingly increasing right there in real time, please seek professional care. While this isn't necessarily a sign of infection, it's obviously important to get the wound itself under control stop the bleeding, and get the cut or cuts properly cleaned and treated. And before I transition into another matter, potentially the subject matter that introduced the actual myth about that whole poisoned claw, I'd like to also cover just briefly the potential signs of an actual infection. Excessive swelling, redness, the wound that is warm to the touch, with regards to the body as a whole, fatigue, fever, Sweating, chills, and body aches are all possible. Swelling of the lymph nodes can also occur. This can point to a possible bacterial infection. If the cat in question is of unknown origin or is believed to be feral, the animal could potentially need to be identified and tested for diseases, rabies being one. It's possible that a doctor could recommend a course of medication against rabies as a precaution, especially if the cat is unable to be found. A tetanus shot may also be administered if you are out of the 10-year window. Now, with all of that said, this leads us right back to our topic question and where I think the potential origin point does exist. So just <laughs> bear with me, if you will. In my own personal opinion, and here again, this is just my opinion, the notion of feline claws containing poison could, here again, could, have started with the existing disease that is known as cat scratch disease also known in slang as cat scratch fever. The disease is caused by the bacteria known as Bartonella hensley. It is transmitted by cats that are infected, or excuse me, to cats, by infected fleas, rather, either through direct bite or contact with actual flea feces. Humans contract the disease via bite or scratch from, naturally, an infected cat. The whole poison claws myth potentially comes from the fact that infected flea feces can become trapped under the nails of a cat. These dirty claws caused by scratching of fleas 
can then scratch you, and once the skin has been penetrated, transmission occurs. It is estimated that roughly 40% of all cats carry the bacteria responsible for cat scratch disease, although the majority of cats will show no signs of illness in any capacity. The infection is more common in kittens, just a few months old, due to the fact that cats of that age are in a very experimental and educational hunting phase, while also being a bit far less disciplined as a whole. This dynamic is why kittens are more likely to scratch people and spread the disease. Cat scratch fever, or cat scratch disease, is diagnosed in an estimated 12,000 people per calendar year, and roughly 500 individuals are unfortunately hospitalized. And here again, this is just my take, but I do believe that the whole myth about poison claws or venom claws is probably an offshoot of the real disease known as cat scratch disease, in which a feline with dirty and infected claws from a flea scratches a person. And with all of that said, a bit of debunking and education mixed, I'll now turn things right on over to you, the audience of Senior Cat Wellness. Question time. Prior to today, prior to the here and now, had you ever heard of the whole poison claw myth? What about venom claws? And what about infection from claws? A personal story on that front? If you do have a story to share, I'd certainly love to read it. And before I head on out, I'd like to thank you, as always, for taking some time out of your very, very busy day to join me right here at Senior Cat Wellness. Did you like what you heard today? If you did, please feel free to like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, we will talk to you later.